The craze back then, right, was to have, you know, blank trucker caps, blank sneakers, and uh, people would customise the caps and the sneakers with, like, I don't know, spray paint, marker pens, you know, fancy, fancy stuff with their names. So I wanted, I wanted a, a cap customised as well. Lah. So, you know, being a graffiti artist. So I had a blank trucker cap, and then I was figuring out, you know, what to write on the cap. So I didn't want to put my name. I didn't want to put, like, things like, you know, peace, love. So cheesy. So, I just thought like you know, I wanted something, you know, something cocky, something arrogant, something lancy. Yeah. So that's how the the lancy idea came about. So I took a marker pen and I tagged the word lancy on my trucker cap. It wasn't until like much later on that I actually could produce the caps because you know to make caps you needed money, right? So what I didn't have was money. So I managed to finally save up enough money to make the caps two years later in 2009. So that's when the first batch of Lancy caps came about. So it were, they were fitted caps because, you know, I love hip hop. Despite me being so confident and so excited about the whole Lancy cap brand, uh, apparently other people didn't share, didn't share the same enthusiasm. So those various streetwear boutiques that I approached to sell my caps didn't exactly, you know, want to sell them in their store because they've never heard of the brand and you know I'm not someone prominent in the street in the scene I would say. So no one wanted to sell the caps in the beginning. So I thought fine I'll sell it myself lah. That's how I started the Swagger Salon as an online store to sell the Lancy caps. So that's how there's the Swagger Salon and there's Lancy. And so when people go like so which is the brand? Yeah, it's actually Lancy because Swagger Salon is actually just the online store. The the initial so-called marketing campaign that I did was Pretty stupid lah, come to think of it. Because back then we didn't have pages, we didn't have Facebook pages, we had groups, right? So, I started this group called Lancy. And the main message was, if I could get 5,000 5, people in this group, I'll tattoo the word Lancy on my body. And everybody just thought it was a damn stupid stunt and they started inviting their friends. Hey, let's look at this idiot, do something stupid. And so like, they just invited all their friends to join that group. And luckily, it stopped at 3,000. <laughs> For some reason, it didn't go beyond that. Then that's when that's when the caps just happened to arrive at my doorstep. So I took pictures and I just posted and I just switched the whole the whole description and everything and I just used the all three thousand people in the group, you know, as a as my platform to as my page lah, so called. Then uh, it the word sort of spread around through that group and also being a hip hop ish kind of person, there were gigs and all that and you know at least. I have friends who are rappers and all that. So they were pretty supportive because they were fitter caps and I know the hip-hop people can can relate to that because back then there wasn't the whole snapback craze yet. It was slightly before the snapback craze. So yeah, the fitted caps and the rappers sort of go together. So they wore the caps to shows, you know, they bought the caps and that's how it slowly started spreading. Lah. And then snapbacks came into came into the scene. So that kind of just blew up. It was a coincidence as well. The reason why I didn't want to do fitted caps anymore is because of uh, the size. I would say it's lo a logistic thing because you need to have sizes, different sizes. And I wasn't doing like thousands of caps. I was only doing like 50 of each. Then the supplier, the factory would make a lot of noise because for each size, you would need a lot of pieces. Yeah, so I thought, okay, let's just solve everything by doing snapbacks. So I won't have to worry about sizing. I can do one design, that amount, one design, that amount. Yeah. So yeah, as luck would have it, Snapbacks came up and I was at the right place at the right time. No, we really wear caps, man. Right. T-shirts is more. T-shirts are more universal, so there were demands for T-shirts. So I did a few runs, la, so to speak, and they sold out very, very quick. So I thought, like, okay, the T-shirt just took off by itself, la. I didn't really do. I didn't really have to push, unlike the caps, but yeah, because it's not just the hip hop people that that were wearing it. A lot of people, young and old, they just. That's how that's how the t-shirts became more prominent than the caps eventually. Yeah, and it moved on to, you know, jackets and other accessories and all that. So it became more than just the cap right now. There's there's always this split whereby I want to design something different from what I'm already doing. And then there's this part where everybody just wants whatever that we already have. So it's always a, a struggle. So we have to split it sort of a 
60-40 thing whereby 60% would be things that the consumers are already familiar with and the 40% I just you know go crazy with it lah whether it's uh, new ideas or things totally unrelated to Lansi you know I can go crazy on the other 40% which I do in a smaller smaller run of production Mainstream media still thinks Lansi is a very crude and vulgar word and so when it comes to to you know getting exposure we are somewhat never in in the mind because you know they might, they're afraid they might get into trouble for having the word Lansi and so when we actually had the chance to be on TV national TV because of a TV series which the producers actually asked us to sponsor our cap was blurred it was censored on TV for like the few episodes that we were featured on okay the first reaction was like what? but after that you see people start talking on Twitter and all that they'll be like why are you censoring the word Lansi? is Lansi a bad word? Yeah, are they censoring it because it's a bad word or, or is it because of a brand? blah 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 so people are talking about it so I don't mind like you by blurring the word you could actually create more attention for me right? yeah. uh, I mean there were also times where we were invited to talk about a brand on TV but upon arriving at the studio, oh, suddenly we're not allowed to say the brand out loud. Things like that happened. So we had our caps uh, pirated, you know, we had counterfeit caps, which was also another eye-opening experience whereby you didn't really know how to feel. Like, okay, everybody says I've, make, I've made it, I've made it, but dude, no, I don't want this to happen, you know, because Chinaman mentality, like, like don't affect my business, that kind of thing. But, Eventually, also, I came to, to embrace the fact that, you know, it's not that bad of a thing because if the fake caps look good, which some of them really are, it would become sort of like a, a marketing exposure thing whereby if someone wears a fake cap on the street, the people around them, around him, wouldn't know that it's a fake cap. They'll just see, oh, that's a Lansi cap. So that's, hey, it's free, free exposure for me. So that's, that's how I learned to embrace it, lah, I suppose. Okay, I mean, we don't have a proper store, so we don't really need that much manpower. But for what it is now, I suppose we run quite well. One, four people. There's me. Uh, there's Jason, who basically does everything else that I cannot do. There's, uh, there's Natch. Okay, Natch is our, our little diva. She basically helps around with uh, a lot of PR stuff and networking stuff whereby she helps uh, build the brand or get connections and all that. She does that a lot. Uh, she deals with like media people, I would say. Not like we get a lot, but that's what she does. And there's Jin, this new guy that came down. He's not really a new guy, he, he started... He, he was part of the Swagger Salon when he started, just that he was based in Penang for the longest time ever and he finally moved down to KL he's sort of helping out more on the whole organizational basis whereby you know managing all the the paperwork and the basically this place in itself whereby I so that I can focus more on the creative work and you know Jason does the day-to-day -day operations uh, so I think I think yeah that's more than more than enough I can't believe people are still not sick of the word Lansi. <laughs> no, uh, I think it has been a somewhat interesting journey because the whole the whole thing, the whole project, the whole clothing line, everything has just been just revolving around that one word Lansi, right? And uh, I really want to take it further, whereby. We don't know we, that people no longer buy a t-shirt for the word Lansi in front, right? That's, that's my ultimate goal. And I would say five years down the road, it's kind of working now because we already have a, a following which has been with us for quite a while and they start to know and embrace what Lansi is as a brand, it's an attitude brand. And we are slowly moving towards the goal of it being a clothing brand and not just a word on a t-shirt, right? We still want people to to remember why they wanted the, the shirt in the first place. Was it because it was badass? Because it was attitude? Was it something they could relate to? You know, was it the lifestyle that, they, that we were portraying? And bring, in, bring them back to that and make them remember why. So that's what the year ahead is for us, whereby it's our fifth anniversary and we're gonna like, you know, bring it back to the people. Uh.